Hello again folks, it's been a while since I did a video so I thought today I'd do one on this Ultratech Supercom TTY or TDD um, that is teletype device or telecommunications device for the deaf and what it is is a piece of equipment that allows somebody that has total hearing loss to communicate over a standard uh, telephone landline. Um, so I thought in this video I'd take you through it, we'd have a look at the device, talk about how it works and then actually do a demonstration of it working. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's crack on. Right, so as you can see, the device looks fairly simple. We have a keyboard, we have a nice VFD, a vacuum fluorescent display to display the data and we have an audio coupler. Now, if you're unfamiliar with uh, what an audio coupler is, it is a rather dare I say it, primitive means of uh, transmitting electronic data across a telephone line. Very common on devices like this, but more common on early dial-up modems. Um, you know, I'm talking vintage computers, that sort of thing. Um, before the internet, before, you know, smart devices and stuff like that, you had a big boxy basic computer that you could communicate with a, a bulletin board service, for instance, which is quite similar in terms of how it looks to an old... Do you remember Teletext on the BBC and BBC CFAX and Teletext on ITV and Channel 4, whatever it was? Very basic, blocky uh, um, internet page, if you want, for want of a better term. But just a very basic page of data. Um, and you used to dial in an old computer. And the early modems used an audio coupler. And it's quite a simple technology. Like it's quite primitive, but it does work. Um, what you would have would be a standard telephone. Clearly, this is far more modern than the, the ones back in the day. Um, but what you do would you would take the the receiver or the handset off the phone and then stick it on top of the device, and it couples the audio, as the name would suggest, uh, using the microphone and speaker. So the speaker of the handset would couple with the microphone of the device, and the microphone of the handset would couple with the speaker of the device, and you'd pop it on top. You would dial the number as normal. The other side uh, or the distant end would ring. Uh, now, of course, if you were hard of hearing, you might have some sort of uh, illumination, you know, a beacon or a flashing light or maybe some sort of vibration device that would indicate to you that there was a call coming in. Uh, you would pick up the phone and then put the handset on your device. And that's how it how it worked, uh, and then any data or any noise would be would be transferred, um, of course, over using the microphone and speaker of the device, both uh, your device and their device. So, um, yeah, I'll turn it on, and it just comes up ready, gives us a little beep tone. Um, so yeah. If you were calling a friend who is also hard of hearing, of course, they would be expecting to use a device like this. However, if you were calling a business, for instance, it was quite common uh, back uh, then for those businesses to have the, the facility to use teletype. And um, you could indicate to the, the business that was calling that you were hard of hearing by using an announcement function of which this device does have and i'll show you in a second um because of course a business is generally going to be expecting a telephone call from somebody who can uh, speak and hear um you know it would be very very few calls will be done would be done over a device like this of course nowadays uh, most businesses you can deal with uh, over email via contact forms via live chat some businesses uh, will even allow you to you know, PM over Twitter or, you know, use WhatsApp, that sort of thing. So back in the day before, you know, all that sort of stuff was available, um, you know, this was how you did your communications. So, yeah, I digress very slightly. What you had to do, uh, you had to have a facility to tell um, the, the individual um, that, that you were hard of hearing. So I'll show you the announcement function now. Or I'll let you hear the announcement function, I should say. Yeah, so hearing impaired caller use TDD. And like I said, that would allow you to, um, you know, inform the, the, the agent at the, the call centre that you were uh, deaf or hard of hearing and they could then communicate you, communicate with you using this device. So, how it actually works 
uh, is quite simple. It converts the texture type into the unit into a series of beeps and, and blips, which is then transmitted uh, via the audio coupler to the distant end. So I'll just type in an example um, to, to let you hear what it sounds like. So fairly similar to the human ear, but, you know, we can't interpret how many blips and bleeps there is there. But of course, the, the, the other device would be able to do that. So um, I don't have another device uh, like this. I don't have a phone line in, in the, the watch shop either. I don't know end it's got one of these devices uh, that I could, I could do in the house. You know, I, I could plug this in in the house and do it. So what I've found is a piece of software called... Um, called tty i think it's uh let me just check dx soft called tty and that allows me to emulate the the protocol if you will of this device and um, so i'm going to test it just using my gaming headset and rather than using the telephone receiver i'm just going to couple the speaker of my headset to the microphone of the device and the microphone of my headset to the speaker of the device and then we'll do a little example um, of of how it would kind of kind of work. So let's say, for instance, I am contacting my utility company, and I want to know how much uh, my gas bill is going to be. So I'm just going to type a message. I'll have called the the company. I'll have done the announce. They'll have picked up and connected using the teletype. So let's go. Hi. Can you tell me how much my next gas bill will be? Account number one, two, three, four, five, six. So that um, message that's been typed has been picked up. It's been sent out by the speaker of the device, been picked up on the microphone. Um, let's say that's a handset that has been transmitted over the telephone line to the other side where the uh, microphone has picked up the speaker of the handset and has then displayed the message i've just typed at the distant end with me so far okay now you have to take my word for it but that information has popped up on my computer screen um it's it's interpreted the audio coming in and it's decoded into text so now if I go over to my computer and pretend to be the call center, I can then reply and you should hear the audio coming out here and being decoded in real time. Just for sake, uh, just to make it a bit easier, I will uh, clear that screen just so it's a nice clear screen. Got to put a space in there, but there you go. Yeah, as you can see, I can confirm that the next gas bill will cost 150 pounds. Um, yeah, that's quite a lot for gas, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that that's how it worked. Really super simple. It's just simply decoding that audio and displaying it on the on the screen. So, like I say, this this predates this predates WhatsApp, email, everything else. Uh, now I can only ha having i suppose it's different if you've if you've never had hearing but f from somebody that, that can hear i can't imagine what losing my hearing would be like it, it must be unbelievably terrible um but to have the ability back in the day you know maybe 30 years ago i'm not sure the vintage of this particular machine but say 30 years ago to have the ability to communicate with somebody quickly and simply must have been absolutely amazing of course if you think of the alternative to that it would be writing a letter so if they say your gas bill is 150 pound which is obviously quite high you might want to query that so you you'd get the letter back saying that's your gas bill you'd send a letter and they say no that's definitely right and you know you could be back and forth sending letters and letters and letters this allowed you to have almost in instantaneous communication. Well, it is instantaneous communication with, with somebody or a business. Uh, I think it must have been fantastic at the time. Yeah, really good. Now, the, the what I thought 
was very strange, as I've just mentioned in this day of WhatsApp and instant messaging and live chat and stuff. Um, Harris Communications in Minnesota in the USA are still selling these devices. You can buy a device, and I have to say it is almost identical to this one. Still got the keyboard, still got the VFD display, it's still got the audio coupler. Um, you can get one of those for about $550. Um, you can get ones that have their own handset, so you could use it as a normal phone as well if there was other people in the house. But you can still buy these. This technology still exists and still works. So there we go. That is the uh, Supercom by Ultratech. It's a, let's say, a telecommunications device for the deaf. Fantastic piece of kit. And it just shows that the technology still works and is still in use today. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Frank S. He's my latest Patreon, or patron, I don't know what the correct terminology is, uh, and he's made a small contribution uh, to the channel to keep it going. Uh, so thanks very much, Frank. Uh, that money will help buy kits and pieces of equipment like this to, to look at and, and show you about and stuff like that. So much obliged to you. Very, very uh, grateful indeed. And that's about it. Um, I suppose it only leaves a one last thing.